Potassium chlorate is very useful oxidizing chemical that is used in chemistry and pyrotechnics. It can be made either from bleach or by electrolysis, but the bleach method is rather annoying for large amount and not so cost effective. So I'll focus on the electrolysis. To electrolyze our salt solution, we need electrodes and most of them are not cheap. <laughs> so in this video I'll present to you how you can make potassium chlorate from salt by using carbon rod which are the cheapest electrodes possible. But using carbon electrodes is far from easy, which is why many fail to make chlorate with them. I myself tried to make chlorate way before without success because I didn't follow the four most important factors when making a chlorate cell. And those four factors are current density, salt concentration, the pH of the cell and the temperature of the cell. We first start by making a concentrated salt solution in water. Since I needed 600 milliliters, I used approximately 215 grams of table salt and completed the rest with water. Then I heated the solution a little bit of camera to make everything dissolve faster. But as you can see, there is still some stuff left after heating a lot. My theory is that this table salt also contains some potassium chloride, which is less soluble, as well as salts like magnesium chloride or sodium sulfate. So it's probably best not to put them in the cell. To separate them, I first decant the top layer in the cell and then use a coffee filter for the rest. Then, to get the correct current density, I had to measure the diameter of the rods and their length that will be immersed in solution to calculate the total surface area, which came up to be 75 square centimeters. Then, we multiply by the optimal current density, which is 35 milliamps per square centimeters, and with an optimal current of 2.6 amps. So I decided to dip the rods just 2 cm further into the cell to get an optimal current of 3.68 amps, which is perfect because it's just above the theoretical 3.6 of my transformer. That's right, for the cell I will use this crappy phone transformer instead of a real power supply, because I ordered one but it will arrive later. So this way we really have a Paul's main chloride setup. This is probably the cheapest setup because I use like 50 cents of salt, 2 euros worth of electrodes and that's it. The most cost will probably be the electricity. For an MMO electrode and a proper supply you will need like 50 bucks or something, but it's much more durable so you know, the choice is yours. Anyway, I just connected everything and you can start to see the bubbles of hydrogen forming on the steel cathode. Let's just measure the real current and voltage with this multimeter. We do get up to 2.4 amps and 3.5 volts. While the cell is running, let me explain a few things. First, why did I start by using sodium chloride instead of potassium chloride if I wanted to make potassium chloride? The reason is that carbon electrodes, even in the best conditions, will somewhat decay and leave off carbon residue. What this implies is that if I use potassium chloride instead, the form potassium chloride will precipitate after some time and be full of carbon particles, which are very, very annoying to remove. So the trick is to first only use sodium chloride to make sodium chloride, which is fully soluble, and then you filter out the carbon to get a somewhat clear solution. Finally, you can add the potassium chloride to precipitate your potassium chloride. Alright, after approximately 2 weeks the cell should be finished, we can start by filtering the carbon as I said. I recommend using a cotton because it will catch smaller particles than the average coffee filter. In the meantime, let's prepare the potassium chloride solution. First, I measured out approximately 245 grams of potassium chloride on my old Chotis scale, and then I added water to fill the beaker completely. After some stirring and heating, most of the potassium chloride dissolved and we can add it to our sodium chloride solution. If you do this with cold solution, you should see a rapid precipitate of KClO3, but since I heated both solutions, it will only precipitate on cooling down. I also added some water to the leftover KCl and mixed it as well. Anyway, here is a time lapse of the potassium chloride crystallizing slowly. Hello you, funny little lizard in the sunlight. <laughs> I 
was not fast enough, sadly. Alright, so now we're just gonna do a classic filtration, you know. I've put a little piece of cotton on the inside. Oh, yeah, this shit doesn't work anymore, so it just hangs with the weight. Alright, so now let's just filter this. I've separated the solution into two beakers, as you can see here and there. All right, so I've filtered everything, and now I've put everything, all the case heal free, inside of this coffee, you know, ice cream uh, kind of thing, just to let them dry in the sun outside. Now that we have our nice crystals, let's do something fun with them. First, I took a test tube and scooped some chloride in it. Then I used my blowtorch to melt it completely into a liquid, and finally I added a piece of sugar to it. You can also use a random candy or anything that contains sugar, like, I don't know, maybe chocolate. As you can see, the first sugar was just blown away, so I added more. Just a quick reminder that you can join a Discord server. Also, I was just able to activate the YouTube donations, I think it's called Supers or something, but yeah, if you're feeling generous, you, you know what to do. <laughs> anyway, that was all for this time, thanks for watching and see you.